Hello everybody and uh, welcome to your next SFML tutorial. Uh, so f for this tutorial we're going to be learning about pixel collision and other types of collision which could be effective to you or um, or it, it depends on what you really want to use utilize in your program. So to save time let's get right into it. So make sure you have all of these included right here and uh, we have two separate collision files and I'm going to be showing you what each of them does and uh, both of them incorporate pixel collision I'm gonna show you a good way to incorporate pixel collision the problem if you guys have watched my Lego HD tutorial series the pixel, well, pixel collision is fairly easy uh, there's a function built in called get pixel and you can get a pixel from anywhere on the screen but SFML is not that easy. In order to get a pixel, what you have to do is create an image, and uh, you have to use a function called uh, to capture the window, which means get uh, like basically take a screenshot of the window, which take which can be kind time consuming and therefore slow down your game. So uh, first you have to capture the window and then get the pixel from the screenshot, and that's not really it's it's hard. To do that, especially if both the player and the object or the enemy is in motion, because you're gonna have to take different screenshots to do um, for different parts of the movement, etc., etc. So the way to handle pixel collision in, in SFML, and it should be handled in other uh, uh, APIs such as Allegro as well. Of uh, in my tutorials for pixel collision, I think I only checked for collision for the four corners of the of the player or whatever. Uh, generally, you're gonna want to check if uh, check for all the pixels to see if there's collision. And in order to, in, to first, firstly, before you check pixel collision, you're gonna want to check if there's a another type of collision first to see if the player is indeed close to what it's supposed to be colliding with. So how do we do this? So two tutorials back, we learned about bound, bounding box collision. So we're gonna be using the bounding box collision code right here. So then we say that if the player is not touching any the object, then nothing happens. And if they are, then we create an image called screen capture and we capture the window. Then we create a for loop and a nested for loop uh, from I to the from zero to the player's width and from zero to the player's height. And then we use the function screen capture dot get pixel. We get the picture at the player's x position plus i and at the player's y position plus j. And if it's equal to blue, that means we have a collision, a pixel perfect collision. So what is this saying right now? So it's basically saying that if the bounding box collision is true, then what we need to do is check to see if it's a pixel perfect collision. Because sometimes you might have a, say you have a sprite or whatever, a player sprite. And uh, it might the bounding box collision might be true, but the player sprite exactly might not be touching what you want to touch. And most likely, bounding box collision is the main collision you'll need. But uh, sometimes, if you, especially if you're a perfectionist, you might want pixel perfect collision. So what you would do is first check for another type of collision, making sure that they're actually indeed close. Then you check all the pixels to see if there is a uh, if there is a collision. Uh, now, sorry for this. I was making, I already made this tutorial, but then I made a mistake in it, so I decided to redo it. And I was already writing the code for the uh, next tutorial, which is audio. But uh, yeah, so then we have, we so we can we gather we gather the pixels. We check to see if there is a collision with the pixels, and if there is a collision with the pixels, then we reset the object's position. So uh, that is it for the uh, for pixel collision. One thing we should notice is that one thing we should note is that in our draw area, one after we draw the object, that's when we should check for the collision to see if the player is um, overlapping the blue. Uh, if we do it after, it, it will still work, but it, it won't be as accurate. Uh, it, it should be pretty obvious. We're just checking the point to see if it's equal to the object's color. If the player is overlapping the object color, then uh, it might not be accurate because that pixel we're checking for is going to be the color of the player and not the color of the object that we're trying to collide with. So make sure you, you do that as well. So, uh, 
So let me comment out, let me comment this collision function right here and let me uncomment the other collision function that I have. So uh, this is a different type of collision that I haven't taught in any of my tutorial series. Uh, and this is going to be teaching you about collision using the Pythagorean theorem. Now trigonometry is a big factor in games uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, mathematics uh, plays a, a huge role when it comes to games not uh, as much in 2d games but mainly in 3d games uh, it requires a lot of math and we're gonna be getting into 3d so might as well start with some basic basic math so a lot of you should know what Pythagorean theorem is so if you have a right angle triangle uh, you have your uh, opposite side your adjacent side and your hypotenuse and uh, the hypotenuse is equal to a. Uh, the hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So uh, we we wanna we can also find the distance between the player and the object by finding out the hypotenuse, which will uh, give us a distance between the two. So first, we wanna do is find the distance between the x coordinate. So we use the absolute value function uh, from last tutorial. And we get the player's position, the the player's x position, subtract the player's y, the the object's y position, subtract the object's x position. Sorry, and we create a d for distance y, and we create uh we get the absolute value from the player's y position, subtract the object's y position. Then for the hypotenuse, we get the square root of uh our distance x to the power of 2 plus the distance y to the power of 2 and that will give us our hypotenuse so we say that if our hypotenuse is less than or equal to a player width or anything within a close range value so if our hypotenuse is within a close range then therefore we check for a pixel collision in this pixel collision we're only just checking the four corners of our actual player to see if there is indeed a collision and if the non, none of those pixels are touching, then therefore there won't be a, a collision. So it's up to you which type of collision you want to do. But yeah, it checks for the four corners. If there's a collision, then it, it resets the object's position. So uh, let me just comment this stuff out because this stuff isn't needed for this tutorial. Not that I just want to confuse you guys. Uh, so yeah, that is basically it for pixel collision. So if we were to run this program. Uh, th everything should be the same as the past few tutorials but you might notice that once you approach the box uh, yeah you might notice that when you approach the box that your player starts to slow down drastically that is because uh, it's, it's um, cap capturing the screen which takes up a lot of memory so it could slow down your, the production of your game but hopefully but if you find out different ways to manage it then there's always a simpler way of going about it so uh, there's, there's different things you can do to modify your code to 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 make it better more efficient to suit your needs so just to run the program I have in my console window here showing me my hypotenuse and uh, right here uh, so if I touch a player uh, then it moves to another random position and therefore you got your pixel collision it's the collision is dead on exactly right as uh, how you want it so for you perfectionists out there if you guys like perfect collision then there you go so that is it for this tutorial next tutorial is going to be uh, adding audio for sound effects so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this and bye